When the Millers came from Madison, Wisconsin, set out on a camping trip in the forest, they chose a spot next to the river to set up camp. But in the river, there was a brown bag floating around, and there were strange noises coming from it. The family just had to know what was inside it. In hindsight, they wished that they had just backed up their things and chose a different camp spot. It was Mother Maisie who ended up pulling the bag out of the water into the canoe. It was a lot heavier than she'd expected. How did this even float? When she opened it up, it spooked her so much that out of her reflex, she threw it right back in the water. But then that wasn't the end of it. Macy wanted to get back to shore as quickly as possible, leaving the bag and its contents behind. But Jason had to see what was inside the bag for himself. The screaming Macy would not allow it. She wasn't getting anywhere near the bag again after what had just happened. But Jason wouldn't let it go either, so he was going to win out. So what was inside the bag? How could it have been making those strange sounds? And how could it have spooked Macy so much? It was just supposed to be an ordinary camping trip like the Miller family had so many in the past. Just the four of them enjoying the great outdoors together in peace. They had even packed out a beautiful place that they were going to camp in the night. And they were planning to have a great time during the rest of the weekend. But fate had different plans. They had been driving almost a whole day to finally reach their destination. The kids were starting to get a bit antsy. Or if they were honest, the kids had been antsy for a while now. But it was all worth it. A beautiful forested area where they could take long hikes and take their canoes out on the long stretches of the river would be perfect. Everyone agreed. Jason, the father of the family, had been excited over since he first heard about the spot from a colleague at work. The pictures he had been shown were spectacular. It looked like this campsite was going to be everything that they could possibly dream of. A whole lot better than the place they usually stayed. But the colleagues also had a warning for him. He was also told by the colleague that he just kept hearing these strange sounds at night. They were camped up close to the river and the colleague speculated that the sounds were coming from there. But he could not place what they were. Jason wondered what it could be, but the colleague hadn't seemed to concern about it and continued to camp there. So Jason let it go. Jason had opted not to tell his family about these sounds as he still really wanted to go despite them and he was worried that his wife Macy would be against it when she heard about the sounds. Besides, it couldn't really all be that bad, right? They were just a few sounds and they would be able to ignore them and enjoy their weekend. That was what he thought. When the Miller family arrived the first day, it was already really late and thus dark. The family was also tired, as could be so they decided to keep sleep in the car for now and put up the tent first thing in the morning. That way, they could just relax. Even though it wasn't the most comfortable, it was going to be easier and faster than setting up a tent in the dark while they were tired. Jason tried to stay awake a little longer than his family and even went outside the car to use the bathroom. He was trying to listen for those strange sounds his colleagues had told him about, but the night stayed eerily quiet. No matter how hard he tried or how close he got to the water, he didn't hear a thing. There was nothing out there. Jason went to sleep very satisfied. He ignored the warnings and kept them a secret from his family. Because now they were camping at a beautiful and peaceful spot. In the morning, they would get up and have a great day on the lake as a family. Jason was sure about it, but it would not be peaceful for long. In the morning, Jason and Macy quickly started setting up their tent while the kids were playing in the forest. At some point, Jason's youngest son, Sebastian, came up to him. He had spotted something in the water. The kids knew not to get too close to the water, but they were interested in whatever it was and had been watching it afloat for a long time. There was a brown bag floating in the water when Jason and Macy looked at it. Jason was pretty sure it had not been there when he had woken up that morning as he had looked out of the water that moment he got out of the car. Sebastian was asking if he should go and get it. He wanted to see what was in the bag and it seemed to be just floating out there, waiting. But the bag was all the way out in the river, and the canoes the family had brought along still needed some preparation before they could go into the water. Jason was planning on doing nothing at the night. There was still a lot to do for the day, and they wanted to go canoeing the next day anywhere. So he wasn't planning on speeding up the process. Jason promised his son that if the bag was still there, the next morning he would go and check it out. Today, they were going to take a long hike. Sebastian accepted this, but for the rest of the day, he would not stop speculating what could be in the bag. He was definitely a determined kid and had a pretty active imagination as he considered all the options. Jason tried to ignore his son for the most part of the day and just enjoy the beautiful hike, but he could not stop wondering for himself and part of him regretted that he did not go back and check it out right away. 
something he would regret even more the next day. But how could he have known when he was looking at the bag from the shore? When they got back to the camp, Jason immediately started preparing the canoe so that they could get out on the water. He hoped to be done in time for him to go out into the water that same evening. Even though he had told Sebastian it would be in the morning, he found himself quite curious about the bag as well. But would he get it in this time? But this hope was idle as the darkness of night quickly set in making it impossible to safely navigate the waters and get towards the bag. Jason told Sebastian not to worry about it, and the two of them went to sleep. After all, it had not moved an inch from where it was that morning, so Jason was sure it would still be there in the morning. The family had dinner, roasted some marshmallows, talked about the day and about tomorrow, and they went to bed very satisfied. And in fact, it was exactly what an evening camping should be like, and the family greatly enjoyed every moment of it. They had such a fun evening together that Jason completely forgot about the bag in the water, at least for now. That night was a lot less peaceful and quiet than the night before. It all started around midnight, when Jason was suddenly rudely awoken by strange sounds, sounds which he could not place. He had never heard anything like it before. But just what could it be? What could possibly be making that awful sound? The whole family was wondering because it had woken up absolutely everyone. All of the family was hearing the noises and the kids were actually pretty scared. Macy was trying to calm them down, but she wasn't sure about the sounds either. Jason finally went outside with the flashlight but could not see anything out of the ordinary. Of course, even with the flashlight, it was very dark and it was hard to see anything at all. But still, it all seemed too normal. All he managed to do was to determine that the sounds were coming from the direction of the water. Just like his colleague had told him, Jason was now kicking himself that he had not listened. When his colleagues talked about the sound, they didn't seem so bad. But now they sounded very spooky and Jason was worried what they meant. The next day, Jason got out of the bed very early. He slept under the shower and put the shower as cold as he could handle. He does this more often than not. This way he could be more awake and could react faster if he had to flee the scene. He walked out of the shower and put on his clothes. The moment he walked out of the room, he heard Macy waking up. She looked up with blurry eyes at Jason and wondered why he woke up so early. She got out of the tent to sit with Jason and ask why he was up this early. Jason didn't want to respond at first because he knew he put Macy in danger if she would go with him. He stuttered and couldn't really reply. Macy imitated Jason and they both laughed. But she was getting with him if he liked it or not. Jason told Macy what his plan was and that he was going to search for the bag. While they ate their breakfast, they discussed what the best plan was. The best option was to get in the same canoe. This had multiple reasons. First of all, the current was strong this morning, so they needed all of the strength they had. Second of all, it was still dark and they could still get lost very easily in this wild landscape. There was no recognizable landmarks. They walked towards the river where they heard the noise again. This time it seemed from further away. They hoped the bag was still close to the canoes. They hopped in the canoe and started paddling down the river. From time to time, their minds were thinking about the current and that it didn't drift the bag too far away. After a while, they realized it was going to be harder than they had expected. They couldn't find the bag and the current was too strong. They decided to rest for a while on the side of the river. Maybe the bag got lost. Should they go back? Jason thought that they should go on. What if it was something that wanted to harm something or even worse, someone? Macy thought it would be better to return to the kids. Out of nowhere, the sound came back. They were close. They knew it. Macy and Jason decided to continue back in the canoe. They talked about what it could be. They were going towards the sound, and with every meter it got louder and louder. But where was it? Macy was very tense and also a bit scared. It was still dark outside, so they had a hard time seeing the bag. Some sun rays were coming through very hazy. They had to do it with their hearing. It could be more than five meters away. In a blink of an eye, Jason saw something in the corner of his eye. There it was, in one of the sun rays he had saw a part of a brown-orange bag. They had to paddle upstream a little bit, which turned out to be a hard-fought battle. With one of the paddles, Macy grabbed the bag and pulled it onto the front of the canoe. It seemed to her that this was a waterproof bag. They went back to the side of the river and pulled the canoe out of the river. They rested for a little while and the bag didn't make any noise for the moment. Macy wondered what could be inside the bag. She wondered more and more if it was something else alive. They wanted to open the backpack at the campsite. It was the safest spot in this area they could think of, but getting back was even harder than going forward in this river. Paddling upward the river could be way too hard. How did they get back? They put the brown bag into the canoe and they picked it up and started walking through the hills. After a while, the bag started to make noise again. The sound was quieter than before. They continued their journey back, but something happened that they didn't expect. 
Out of nowhere, the terrain got rougher than they expected. The forest got more wooded, they decided to leave the canoe behind and pick it up later. After two more hours, they were finally back at their campsite. They went back to their tent, sat down at the table. The boys were still sleeping, but the bag started making more and more noise. They didn't want to wake them up. So they picked up the bag and walked a bit further away. It was finally time to open the bag. They put their bag on the ground and laid their hands on the zipper. They pulled it open at the same time. At first, Macy couldn't see what it was, but when she saw it, she screamed so hard that the children woke up. Jason's mouth fell open when he saw it. What could it really be? Who would make such noises like that? What was the function of it? In the bag lay a Bluetooth speaker which made this sound. He always thought it was something alive that made these sounds. He asked why Macy was screaming and she said that he needed to look better. There it was. In the bag was a clown's mask. It scared the living lights out of Jason. Who would do something like this and why was it in the bag? At that moment, the owner of the camp came towards them. He said he heard Macy screaming and asked what happened. Macy said that they found a mask of a man in the bag. The man started laughing and knew who the bag belonged to. It was his. Macy and Jason didn't understand and asked the man for an explanation. So he explained. He said he kept it there because every time they had a visitor, he wanted to do a prank. Most of the time he would do it because he observed people first and wondered if it was a good plan or not. He kept it in the river with the sound on to keep people away from it. He was planning to do it this time because the Millers looked like a family who would handle it and laugh about it afterwards. Jason and Macy were both flabbergasted and wondered why would someone do something like this, but both their sons could not stop laughing. The idea alone made them die of laughter. Jason called his colleague and told the story. The colleague couldn't believe it and was still a little suspicious about it, but Jason convinced him everything was fine. The Millers had a blast for the rest of their camping trip. The camping owner was a really nice man with a good sense of humor and a lot of stories to tell. The man himself also had experienced many nice and exciting things in his life. The Millers promised that they would visit him again and went back home. They still tell his story to their friends. They were in such disbelief that they were still not sure if the story of the camping owner told them was true. 